Okay guys, let's see a show of hands. Who else wants to de-stroke an LS? Come on guys, you know what I'm talking about. Take a big bore block, like a 6.0, 6.2, or even a 7 liter. Install that little 4.8 crank, you know, to get it to rev. Come on guys, I can't be the only one who wants to build a short stroke screaming machine. In this video, we're gonna cover three things. First of all, we're gonna cover the buildup of a short stroke, de-stroke LS3 that I built. I built this a while ago, but it's still pretty cool. I combined an LS3 block with a 4.8 meter crank. I even ran it with two sets of heads, one cathedral port and one rec port. So what happens? Let's find out. The next thing I'm gonna cover is the myth of the D-stroke motor. Does a small crank, short stroke, really help it rev? The final thing is, I'm gonna show you where a short stroke motor is actually beneficial. We've got a lot to cover, so let's get going. After assembling our combination with the five or the uh, LS3 block from Gander Chevrolet and our, our 4.8 crank, the 6.3 inch rods and the custom JE pistons, we put the Air Airflow 230 heads on it and the special cam from Brian Tooley Racing. I'll put the specs in here so you can take a look at them, see what it is. But this combination worked out. I put the high ram on it and two 750 Ultra XP carburetors. After we dialed everything in with that camshaft from BTR, our little D-stroked LS3 or Big Bore 48, depending on how you want to look at it, produced 607 horsepower out here at 60 or 7,800 RPM. So it's revving out there pretty good. And produced 466 foot-pounds of torque at 6,200 RPM. To give you an idea, let's take a look. We'll run a comparison between this and let's just say a, a stock LS3. Might be easier if I just use either horsepower or torque here because that gets a little confusing. So let's just look at power. So that's the power curves for the LS3 and our modified version, our de-stroked LS3. You can see lots more camshaft. It loses power down low. We started the run like at 4,500 because we were gonna be running from 45 to 8,000. But as you can see here, it loses power down low, but storms pretty hard on the top. That's a comparison with the factory LS3. Now let's take a look and see what happens when we applied the other camshaft that uh, Billy Godbold sent from Comp Cams. You can see it made a little more peak power, had, had this nice little uh, bump here at the top. And with that camshaft, it made 633 horsepower. Torque would be down on this one, as you can see, it was basically down everywhere compared to the other cam from 73 or 7400 on down. It made less power, but did have that big, big peak number that everybody wants to talk about. So this is the combination uh, with these two camshafts, comparison between this and the factory LS3 cam. Now let's take a look and see what happened when I took off the Airflow Research cathedral port heads and that cathedral port Holly manifold and installed the TFS 255, the CNC LS3 heads and the matching Holly rec port intake manifold, the high ram. While we had this motor, this D-stroked uh, 4.8 liter or D-stroked LS3 with the 4.8 crank in it, and by the way, this thing calculates out with a 4065 bore and the 3.268 stroke on the 48. This thing calculates out at about 338 cubic inches, in case you guys were wondering. Also, I'm going to put up the specs on the comp cam so that you guys can see that. But here is our combination with the Airflow Research heads. And here is what happened after we saw the TrickFlow 255 LS3 heads. You see we had a slight drop in power. Now some of this can be attributed to the fact that there was almost a 10 cc difference in the combustion chamber size between these heads. So with more chamber volume or with less chamber volume on the rec port heads, I think we would see better power. But I thought it was gonna be interesting because we had enough bore size to fit those heads on. Even though we had the short stroke, we had a high ram. The LS3 had definitely flow a ton, so we had more than enough power to, or more than enough airflow to support the power level. So I was really excited about trying this test, but this is what happened. And again, you guys can complain about the change in compression ratio, uh, complain that these heads didn't get a fair shake, but this is just something that we did while we had the thing on the dyno. I had them there. I got more time, <laughs> more time than I know what to do with. So we went ahead and did this test. But here are the results of the comparison between the rec port and the cathedral port heads. And what do you guys think? Should uh, we give it another shot? I mean, do you think that these guys got a fair shake? Let me know what you think in the comments. 
let's get to our conclusion. Okay guys, what did you think? Now I love this little D-stroke LS3. The combination of the big bore and the short stroke, man, this thing really wanted to RPM. It revved up there. It made good power. So it did everything I wanted it to do. We were trying to get to 8,000 RPM with the hydraulic roller. We were trying to make more than 600 horsepower, which we did with both of the cams and both of the head. The head test was kind of cool. It was very interesting. Enlightening for me to find out that the bigger ports and the bigger valves really didn't do what we thought, although I wish we could have ran it at the same compression. But hey, what are you going to do? Here's where I get the comments. Guess what? That short stroke, the 4.8 liter crank, is not the reason we were able to run this kind of RPM. In fact, this thing would make more power if I put the 5.3.6.0 crank in this combination. There you go, start making your comments. So why is this? Well, if you take a look at this, the RPM potential of this combination, even though it was fairly high, was nowhere near the limitations of the stroke. You see, the thing that limits RPM more than anything else on 99% of these combinations is always valve train. It's never the stroke length. If you get the cam right, the lobe design and the intensity, and get the valve spring right, and not just lots of pressure, but the right pressure and the right oscillation, you get those combinations right, you'll be able to run the RPM, almost regardless of what stroke you have. So the little 4.8 stroke, which I love, it reminds me of an old DZ302, it's awesome. But the reality is that the 5.3 stroke, the 6.0 stroke, heck, even a 7 liter stroke would rev just as high. That's not the limitation. Here's an example. Suppose we have a 5.3, a 4.8, and a 6.0. Now for the 6.0, we'll have to modify it a little bit in our theoretical model here. Let's suppose we put 706 heads on it and the stock 5.3, 4.8 camshaft already has the truck manifold. So if you compare the power outputs of all of these stock motors, you'll see that the 4.8 makes peak power at a higher engine speed than the 5.3. The 5.3 makes peak power at a higher engine speed than the 6.0, and the 6.0 is the lowest of the bunch. So if we look at the 4.8 and the 5.3, you see, hey, look, the 4.8 has a shorter stroke. It makes peak power at a higher RPM, therefore it likes to rev. The reality is that the reason it likes to rev, or that it has to rev, depending on how you look at it, is because of the change in displacement. Sure, that came from the stroke length, but if we look at the comparison between a 5.3 and a 6.0, the difference there came from a change in bore. And the 6.0 still wanted to make peak power at a lower engine speed than the 5.3. Again, it's not bore and it's not stroke. It's either one. If you just change the displacement, a smaller combination will make peak power at a higher engine speed than a bigger one. It's just simple math. So now that we've taken a look and I've told you why we don't need the short stroke, let's see some examples where maybe you do. Maybe it is beneficial. So if the stroke length isn't really limiting RPM potential, then why would we ever use a short stroke combination? Well, that's a good question. And they use it a lot in ultimate forms of racing, like for instance, Formula One. But did they choose the short stroke because they know it will RPM? And those guys run, I mean, in some of the experimental motors, they're running 18, 19, even 20,000 RPM. So surely a short stroke is definitely gonna come into play there. Well, it probably does, but the components that they use in the short block in these Formula One motors, ranging from 10,000 RPM all the way up to almost 20,000 RPM, the fundamental uh, components that they use in those really didn't change. What does change though, is the bore and stroke the reason that they choose the big bore and the short stroke is for airflow. That's why you want the short stroke, because you can combine it with a big bore. And the bigger the bore, the bigger the valves you can use, the bigger the ports you can use, the more flow you can get into the motor. And the power output of the motor, since it's a giant air pump, is really dependent on flow. In the case of a Formula One motor, they have a short stroke motor that revs to, like I said, 18, 19,000 RPM. And if they do that, they make a specific torque output. If they can raise that specific torque output higher and higher in the RPM range, they just make more horsepower. And to do that, they need airflow. So that's where you'd use a short stroke and a big bore, but it's not really because of the short stroke and certainly not for any of the LS stuff we're dealing with, except maybe Ben over there with Spinal Tap. It's just because you can get more airflow into the motor. Okay, so do I manage to piss everybody off? The reality is there's nothing to be mad at. This experiment was nothing but a success. And as a matter of fact, it was a double success. We made over 600 horsepower and we ran the thing successfully many times to 8,000 RPM. So nothing but good things. I love this D-stroke LS3. It reminds me of the old DZ302 stuff. And if you ask any small block owner, that's the best small block ever made. 
Never mind the fact that a 327 or a 350 makes more power, but they love that DZ302 because it's got a short stroke and a big bore and you can rev the heck out of it and there's no way you can convince them that it's nothing but the best. Same thing with these D-stroke motors, but here's what I want you to do. Don't think about it as a D-stroke LS3. Think about it as a big bore 48. That way you're going from a small motor and making it bigger. Bigger is better. Armature Holder guys, thanks for watching. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring that bell. Come on guys, help me out. We'll keep the videos coming.